Hello everybody, and is everybody well today? <laughs> I am so delighted to hear that, and moi, I am very well, and so is my young friend here. Let me introduce you to Luke Whitworth. Luke, you're very welcome to be here. Now, Thank you. Luke is a pilot, you know that, a pilot. We met each other for the first time several years ago. You were just 14 at the time. Now, as I remember, uh, you were in school and Miss Becky. Yeah, yeah Becky Hall. Yeah. Mm, yeah, Miss Becky came to visit you. What was it, a career thing? Yeah, yeah, career advising, yeah. And, uh, of course, in the school there was absolute pandemonium because <laughs> everybody was very well behaved, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. But at the end of class, uh, you went up to her and you said what? What did you say? Uh, basically, that I wanted to be an airline pilot. Um, and if she knew anyway, I could go about it, basically. Only 14, I didn't have a clue. <laughs> and, of course, Becky said, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know a few people. She did. And she said that she knew me, too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. And he's from, Luke is from... Uh, Doncaster, that's E-G-C-N, is it yeah, C-N? Yeah, yeah. It is. E-G-C-N, if you want to look it up, that's the airport. And um, so Becky called me and then uh, they turned up. Uh, his mum and dad was there and young Luke as he was then. <laughs> young Master Luke sounds yeah. like Star Wars, know, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> anyway, came and uh, we put him in the simulator to find out whether or not he would be able to uh, fly and uh, just to practice. And he took to it like a duck to water. So, and that was the start of the journey. And then he started taking lessons. You could do that at 15, couldn't you? Yeah, log hours from 15, I think, yeah. And was it on your 16th birthday? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And here's this, on his 16th birthday, what did you do? Yeah, my first solo. I flew in the circuit out of Santa. First solo. <laughs> he wasn't old enough to drive a car, but he was there soloing, flying an aeroplane all on his own. How about that? <laughs> and now you're much older and you're getting more wiser and you're certainly building up your hours. So yeah, yeah. Still wanting to be an airline pilot. 100%. Yeah, all right. Changed. Well, now I've got to tell you, I'm not an airline pilot, okay? I flew cargo. Cargo never complains, you see. <laughs> so when I flew cargo, and it was always with propeller uh, engines, and um, it was an airline pilot for Ryanair by the name of David Fenny. He's just retired this year, and uh, he and I, were talking and he says, I should get a simulator. This was years ago. And uh, so I built the simulator and he encouraged me to do it. And he told me how each part works. So I had to learn how to fly a 737. And he was the one who taught me how to do that. As I said, he's retired now, but he was based at East Midlands. East Midlands was his home base for Ryanair, and he would fly out all over the place from there. Uh, almost like a, a bus driver on a route, you yeah, know. Yeah, on the depot. One of his routes was going East Midlands to Dublin, Dublin back to East Midlands. And um, so I used to see those uh, charts, share the charts with me, share the information with me about all of the aircraft. And it was a thick wad of papers that they would be given in the briefing room with all the information in it. Now, of course, it's all electronic. Yeah. So that was how David started out with me. And now 
you are That's going it. to go yeah, through the stuff. same thing. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. So I've got the simulator here, and uh, we're going to put it through the paces, and Luke is going to be Capitan. He's going to be the El Capitano today. <laughs> and so he's going to take the controls. I'm going to ride in the right seat for a change. I haven't ridden in the right seat for a long time, so this will be a good experience for me. Right, I th oh, now, the route that we're going to do today. Um, I had a message from Agent M, Agent M again, and he, when he wrote me, he said he would like me to fly it from ZKSE to ZKHM. Now, those, in case you want to look them up, are airports, uh, domestic airports in North Korea. I'm going to fly anything, anywhere, anytime, but unfortunately, there were no Jeppesen charts available for either one. So being able to put together a flight to fly North Korea like that wasn't going to be practical. So we talked a little bit back and forth. And then I dropped to him the announcement, which you're going to hear today. I told him that this was going to be the last flight of Ryanair 186. Mm. I am getting old and it's the aircraft is going to be disassembled and transported to Italy to my pal father Ludovic over there who will be using it in his parish with his youth group there in Italy. So it's going to be still in use. So I talked to him and said to Agent Hem, would he mind if we did a flight between Dublin and East Midlands? And he said, no problem at all. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go Dublin to East Midlands. And in the past two years, three years, I've done flights all over the world, requests for different people, but not once has there been a flight in and out of East Midlands. So coming back to home base is what this is today. So David Fenny, thank you. Thank you for teaching me everything that I know, which I know is not anywhere near what you know. But look, I've been passing it on, so I've been paying it forward, as they say. So today we're going to fly from Dublin to East Midlands. And we are going to be following Ryanair flight 5437, 5437, or FR 5437, as you can see down here on the screen. Last week, the flight was from Birmingham to uh, Dublin. So I'm going to start at the same stand that... Uh, I docked at last week, which was stand 121. So that's where I'll start out from. We'll have a look in a little bit to see where this morning's flight, because this flight was made earlier this morning, and where it came into at East Midlands. And what we'll do is we'll try to dock at the same stand, okay? Yeah, yeah. He's going to be steering, so. And, yeah. EIDW Scenery is made by MK Studios, MK Studios, and EGNX, which is East Midlands Airport Scenery, is made by Gary at UK2000. So, are you ready? 100%. 100%, wow. <laughs> oh, sounds just like me when I was that age for flying, oh well. So, let's go into pre-flight, shall we? Yeah. All right, we'll see you in pre-flight. Right, here we are in Flight Aware, and we're looking here at Ryanair 5437. Here you can see the designator right there. And this one landed two hours and 47 minutes ago, so we're going to be following this exactly. Took off from Dublin, landed at East Midlands, we're going to be starting out at stand 121 because that's where I docked last week. And we'll check in a moment on another program to find out where this particular flight came in at. 
Here's the basic information of the flight and you can see all this green stuff here. This is rain and wind and well we are in winter. So Dublin, it looks like it was a straight out departure from Dublin and a straight in to East Midlands. Looking at the uh, 27,000 feet was the cruising altitude, so we are going to do the same thing. We'll set 27,000 feet, okay? So that's essentially what we've got there. And this was a 737-800 that uh, did this flight. So even though this was a uh, uh, flight, uh, Ryanair flight 5437, we will still be 186 because... That is the name that puts the fear of God into all the air traffic controllers when they say, oh, it's Ryanair 186, please let him come through. <laughs> all right, let's have a look at Windy. Here you can see the wind is blowing straight across the Irish Sea. And uh, it says here wind is 07014 knots, visibility 10 kilometers or more, which is good. Light shower and rain, clouds view at 1,000 feet, scattered 1,800. And look at this, We've got cumulonimbus in the area. So we we'll, may have a little bit of turbulence. Um, broken 3,000 feet, temperatures a chilly 7 degrees. Yeah, we are definitely winter. Q and H 1019, which is just a little bit above standard, which is one would you remember what your what it is? I couldn't remember. One zero one three. Right. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the that's the standard is one zero one three or one nine decimal nine or two in the inches of mercury. Which when you start flying transcontinental and going across the Atlantic, that's what they give you. They they they'll do it in inches of mercury and not Q and H. Looking at the runways. This one is now in operation, but unfortunately, the air, uh, the scenery manufacturer, by the way, is uh, which is MK Studios. Um, when they designed it, this was not in operation. So there's just this one runway that we have to contend with. So it looks like for all the world, we are going to be definitely coming out on runway nine for our departure. And looking now at our destination, it's still VFR and the wind is still blowing fairly stiff going across England there. Wind zero five zero, six knots. So gonna be a slight crosswind coming in. We'll be coming in on zero nine. Um, so you yeah, better anticipate a slight crosswind coming down. 10 kilometers or more clouds scattered at three, oh, 3,100, broken at 4,400, temperature is a cooler five degrees, Q&H 1018. It was minimum uh, a little while ago, but it is VFR now. And here's the runway. We'll be coming in, actually it'd be nice, a straight in uh, approach. And over here, right there, there is the Ratcliffe power station that we'll get to see as we're making our approach. Now, looking here, this is, I'm looking now at Flight Radar 24. This, this is the previous flight. This is this morning's flight of Ryanair 5437. And here you can see it's a Boeing 737-800. And there's the registration and serial number and everything else. But I wanted to, to see this because this is the route of its arrival. And it came in just a little over two hours ago, landed straight in on runway nine, came around and then docked right there. And that is stand number nine right there. There's eight, that's nine. So 
going to be able to park it right there. <laughs> yeah, we'll go. Well, uh, hopefully there isn't another aircraft in the way, but if there is, then you have to find another one. But yeah. we're going to try to follow this because that is Stand 9 at East Midlands. Okay, let's go into sim brief. We are Ryanair and we are 186. And we're departing from IDW and we're going to go to EGNX. Now this is our airframe. Inside of this, this by the way, EIENI -E is a real aeroplane. And I went online and got all of the information about the engines, the performance, the number of seats available, the fuel capacity, uh, burn rates, everything, and entered that into a custom airframe right in this. So when Navigraph looks at this, they say, oh, you're in that kind of an aircraft, so we know how much fuel to say you should be loading yeah, on. Yeah. So that's how they do that. We're Cruise Profile 6, because that's what Ryanair does, it's 6. There's a registration number, uh, there's our call sign. Schedule flight time, 1 hour, 10 minutes. That's block, block time, of course. Uh, departure is going to be actually 10 right. Uh, 10 left is not available in the uh, airport scenery that we have. Taxi out and taxi in is all there. We're going to use also the same one that they did, which was 27,000 feet, so 270. We have, we are always full of passengers because we have one ton of freight. And you know what that freight is? It's champagne and caviar. <laughs> okay. And then here we got all the information for the departures and arrival. There's the standard instrument departure. And right there is the standard terminal arrival route that they're asking for. Distance is 201 nautical miles. Oh, EGLL. Oh, all right, let's have a look. That's Heathrow. So there's Heathrow. That's our alternate should uh, things go pear-shaped, which, of course, they could. But um, so be prepared to go down to Heathrow if we don't get it. You don't have anybody meeting you at East Midlands, do you? <laughs> Not today. No. They'll have to drive a long way to get to you. Okay. Well, this is calling for a route going out like this and around to there. But, you know, we can make this, and we will inside the cockpit, we will just make this a straight in just like the previous flight did because they had a straight out departure and a straight in landing. They were given a straight in permission, so... We'll do the same thing. So to do that, I'm going to take that off, analyze the route, and now it's 183. But look at that. See, now it comes in for a straight in landing at EGNX. So that's what we'll do. We're, we're going to do a straight in landing and then everything will be uh, planned accordingly. Okay, going up to the top then, I'm going to save the flight and then generate the flight plan. All right, here's the summary. There's the aircraft, origin, destination, Heathrow is the alternate, cruise altitude, uh, airtime. This will be 41 minutes. So when you're on the runway ready for departure, you start the clock. When we turn off the runway at East Midlands, push this, the chronology again, and that stops the clock. We'll see how, how well we do with the 41 minutes. <laughs> hey, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> Here's the routing right there. No dispatcher remarks. And there, of course, is the route again. Looking at the flight plan so that you can see what the key parts are. Ryanair 186 is our 
designation. And there, of course, is our root. This F270 is our cruising altitude. EGLL is Heathrow designation, and there's the information for it. We'll need to know that we're cost index 6. We'll need to know the average wind and speed. And it looks like it's a 22 knot headwind that we're going to be dealing with. Down here, we'll need to make sure that there's 5,116 kilograms of fuel, just a tad over five metric tons. What's the weight of your car? Nowhere near that. <laughs> Nowhere near that. Imagine, more than the weight of your car is what we've got to shove in for the flight. Get it off the ground. Yeah. Anyway, 2,393 kilograms, that's close enough to 2.4 metric tons, so it'll be 2.4 when we go into the FMC. And of course, there's the trip and taxi, just a little over two metric tons, but no tankering recommended. And down here, this is the, the route, and I'll put this in the description box below this video. We're going to need to know the descent information for this altitude. This is flight level 200, which of course is 20,000 feet. Yeah. Uh, I was just thinking, a Cessna 150 and a Cessna 172 won't get up to mm, 20,000 feet. <laughs> anyway, and there's the 15,000 feet. It will do yeah. that. And here's 10,000 feet right there. <laughs> this is our, basically, this is the cruising uh, altitude. It's flight level 240. It's a little bit below what we are. and But you can see this one here. This one is for 30,000 feet. And there's not an awful lot of difference between the two. But it says that once we depart and at ground level there are headwinds. And coming in to land there'll be headwinds. But there'll be crosswinds on our climb and descent. So you're going to have some crosswinds as we make our journey across the Irish Sea and across North Wales there. <laughs> and here's the vertical profile departing from EIDW. Here's the standard climb, top of climb, going over here to Dollop and then straight down to EGNX where we will expect a straight in uh, permission to land. I hope they don't change their minds. Now this little dotted line, this dotted line is called the tropopause. And it's the interesting thing about tropopause is that you, get a, you can get some interesting temperature changes, but generally speaking, above the tropopause, it's smoother air. Mm. And uh, so therefore, when we break out the champagne glasses, we can get out the proper crystal because none of it will be broken or chipped. But since we're going to be below the tropopause, well, anything can happen. And uh, we may have to do plastic glasses today. It's a bit tacky, especially when it's that posh French champagne that we serve. None of that cheap plonk, you know. Only the best for Ryanair 186. Okay, let's go on into Navigraph charts. All right, here we are in Navigraph charts, and here's the world view, and I'm choosing the VFR screen, which gives us all of the terrain. It's a lot more interesting, I think. So I'm going to have an uh, import a flight, and I'm going to import it from Simbrief, and there it is, EIDW to EGNX, and bring it in. So import and open. And there's all the information. There's our entire route right there. Look at that. So that's the departure. And then we'll have to fit something in on this one uh, for our um, arrival. Now we can, if I switch to IFR High, Here's East Midlands. I'm looking now for a waypoint. So that waypoint is Staffa. 
S-T-A-F-A. So if we put Staffa in, that should then give us a straight in straight run. In, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that would. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to add that to the root. So now we've got that extra leg in there. So now we then have a straight in approach. That's how you can do it. You, you've got to build, like that, yeah. yeah, you've got to build the root. It's got to work to something. If we look here, it's already put some of the charts that we need. As I say, this runway and this runway here is not available to us because it's not on our charts in the simulator. So we will be probably taking off from this. And this is um, 10 right will be departing from. And this is the departure route going down. And so it's a Dexon departure. So we'll need to put the Dexon departure in when we do the, um, the plan. The arrival is right here. Plan is to come in on 09. And then probably we'll be taking off at this one coming around and going down here and right there is where the stands are. I'm going to need to add stands east because this is where we will be parked number 121. So this would then show us our route to get out to the airport. Parking stands and coordinates and I'm going to pin that. So that everything that we need is pinned at the bottom right there. So it'll be easy. This will come up on your charts and your yoke. So you just need to tap on each of yeah. these and it will so bring it up. Them, yeah. yeah. So looking at the airport. So there's the airport and this is what will be coming in straight on. Oh, it'll be a breeze, won't it? <laughs> Famous last words. Famous last words. Yeah, that's true. Anything can happen. That's that's right. OK, right. Well, we are all set. I'm going to change this back to VFR. Because here you can see from crew that going over Stafford. Well, we get to see a fair bit of England. Here is where um, here's Birmingham and there's Birmingham Airport. This last week, that's where I took off from. So we'll be coming back to West Midlands, which is just a little bit to the north. OK, I think we've got everything. Do you have any issues, any no, problems? No, that's everything sorted. Good. Ready for it? Ready. In that case, then, let's go into the cockpit and get ourselves started. Right, Luke, here we are. This is where you were just uh, four or five years ago. Yeah. And uh, now you've got a little bit more experience, actual flight underneath you. So we're ready now to give this a go. So are you set to go? Yeah, 100%. All right, then let's do the startup procedure. First of all, turn on the battery. Just push the whole top down. Oh, yeah. And we check that there's 24 volts. So we've got the fuel pumps on yeah. and now just put this to the middle, push it down, and then bring it back to the center. Okay. Now, up here, it says we've got 23 volts up there, and we have it set for APU generator. That tells us what the voltage is. The low oil pressure light has come on. So, I'm good. Now, this is climbing up. And in a moment, it'll come back down and stabilize. Tricky holding this camera at the same time. but Anyway, when it comes back down and stabilizes, we're looking for this light to come on. And when this light comes on, just push both of those down. Now, up here, you can see we have 115 volts. I'm going to have there. Now the camera can catch that. So now we have 115 volts coming from this. So first thing, turn the IRS on left and right to nav. 
Good. Galley on. This lets the crew to uh, uh, get the microwaves running and the kettle on. Yeah. <laughs> and emergency exit lights. No smoking and passing seat belts. See, basically we just do it in blocks like this. Then over here we do the window heat. I'll do this, it's easier for me. Left and the right window heat. We'll leave the probes off for the moment. That's your pitot tubes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Your pitot tubes, of course, are easier, but on these they get very hot and got the ground crew, they tend to grab hold of things. And if they grab hold of a hot pitot tube, they have colorful language. <laughs> and then we'll turn on the hydraulic pumps. And then over here, the forward service hatch light is on and the equipment light is on. Those are the, that's the forward door and that's the equipment, that's the stairs, the air stairs yeah. that go down. And then over here, I'm going to turn on the APU bleed, the recirculating fans, left and right packs and the isolation valve. And there's the noise of the heat being pumped through the cabin. Now these arcs over here that you see here, that says that the IRS has aligned and is active on both sides. Then I'm going to switch this up to here. So I'm going to put that up to, to there and then switch this to system down here. And the next thing, the last thing I need to do now is put on the steady light that lets the ground crew below know that we are in here and programming. And out of there is where all of the passengers will come. They'll come out and board. So we are here at stand 121. Let me show you what all this looks like. So there you can see is stand 121, which is where we were last week. And you can see the rain is belting down, absolutely siling down, just coming down. But this scenery is made by MK Studios. Give you a, a nice view. Lovely detail. And you can see that you can see all the way through the glass over here, looking through the waiting area. So they've done a lovely job of putting this together. Now we're all set in here. I think it's time to program the FMC. So push FMC and position initialization. And our airport is EIDW. And put that into the number two from the top. That's it. That's it. And we are at gate 121. So put 121 in. And put that in. Number, that's it. And it comes up with exactly the correct coordinates for our start. So if you push that one, it goes into temporary, and then push that one, and it will, down, yeah. then it will enter in. See, now our screens all come alive. So that's how that works. Now we go to the route, and origin is EIDW. Yeah. And we're going to go to EGNX. And we are Ryanair RYR 186. Uh, 186. And put that into the flight number. Good. Now we go down to next page. Uh, uh, now, this is where you need to look at that flight. So, uh, the first waypoint, that's the stint. So, the first waypoint is what? Dex? Dex, uh, yeah. All right, let's put Dex in. So, we're going direct. So, I can go over here. So, uh, type it in. Yeah. yeah. 
be just like it says on there. See, then it goes direct. What's next? Uh, y124. So L U. So the yank. Yeah. Then do Yankee one two four, whatever it is. And that will go in the left. That's the root. And then it goes to. Over that, and, and then the U Y one two four. Okay. And, uh, yeah. and the dollar. Dollar. And then, if you remember, we are going to add that one extra. Oh, right, yeah. Which it's is very well, yeah. and put in that in there, yeah. And it will be the top one. It's always the top one even when you get things like this. Yeah. They always give separate ones, but it'll always come out with the right top one that's the, yeah. that it presumes is the that's one. Relevant, yeah. yeah. And then activate that and execute good now we go to fix and we put in our destination which is EI, uh, EGNX yeah. and put yeah. that in there yeah and now we're going to need three circles around our destination yeah. so we'll need a, a slash four that can go into that one yeah slash ten that goes into there and a slash 30. Now in terms of the simulator, um, four miles is when Mr. O'Leary likes to drop the gear. Yeah. 10 miles is when we need to be at flaps 10. 30 miles is when we can actually be within range of the control tower for asking for permission to land. Yeah. But in the real aircraft, 30 miles, that's the <laughs> circle of the uh, controlled airspace around the yeah. destination. Yeah. So it's very important to remember all of that. And um, right, next we go to descent, DES, go to forecast. And transition level is 6,000, that's good. So we need the information for flight level 200, 150 and 100. Okay. So 200 in that one. And put yes. that in, yeah. And then 150. One below, yeah. yeah. And 100. That's 10,000 points. Yeah. yeah. Um, our Q and H at our destination is what? Uh, at the bottom right is here, yeah. uh, 1018. 18. Okay, uh, 1018. And put that in up on that one. Top one. Oh, yeah. Now go to the uh, flight plan again. Now put the information in for flight level 200. Oh, so 154 dash is here. Exactly like that, yeah. Well, shall I do the dash or just do yeah. it? Slash. You can, uh, you don't have to put in leading zeros. Right. Make it easier. And okay, two seven, good. Good, and then execute that. Departure and arrivals. Go to departures. Top. Okay. Now, for this, we're going to need to listen in to the ATIS to find out what they are giving us. Pretty much we know, but we want to get it confirmed because it also gives us the 
ATIS code, yeah, when we get our clearance, we have to say that we have something. Mm -hmm. So what is the frequency for ATIS? It's 124, 525. 124? Yeah. And what? 525. Okay. Government International Airport Information, India, 1300, wind, low visibility, 052 at 19 greater than 20 miles, sky condition, in light rain, temperature, few clouds at 1300, ceiling, 1000. Broken, dew point, altimeter, seven, four, one, zero, one, nine, up, landing and departing, runway, one, zero, VSR aircraft, say direction of flight, all aircraft read back, hold short instructions, advise controller on initial contact you have, India. Alright, so, we've got certain information from that, we've got the fact that the runway is going to be uh, zero, nine, yep. and it's light rain, which is true, and the Q&H is what? Yeah, 1019. Okay, then 1019 there. And then check it down there. There we go. Now we're, we're set on that. Yeah. Now while we're on that, let's have a look at your chart for uh, our destination. So it says decision height is 506. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is 200 feet above our destination. Yeah. Now, so turn this one until you see 506. See where it says yeah, barometer? Yeah, yeah. Good, we've got that in. Now, other things that we're going to need is airport elevation. Uh, we'll need that, so that says it's 300 and how many? Six. 306. So our cruising altitude today is 27,000, so I'm going to put 27,000 here for the cruising altitude and then 300 in this. This is our pressurization and if we don't do this, we get errors, even on the simulator. So our landing altitude is that and that's our cruising altitude right there. Now we need to get our clearance delivery. So what is the clearance delivery frequency? Yes, and they're to clearance, one to one, but it's on five. Dublin, clearance delivery, Ryanair 186, IFR2, East Midlands, ready to copy. Ryanair 186 is cleared to Charlie Romeo Echo Whiskey Echo Airport as filed. Fly runway heading, climb and maintain. 13000 departure frequency is 119.55 score 3732. Ryanair 186 cleared to Charlie Romeo Echo Whiskey Echo Airport as filed. Fly runway heading, climb and maintain 13000 departure on 119.55 score 3732. Ryanair 186 red back is correct. Contact ground on 121.8 when ready to taxi. Okay. Well, when we're ready to taxi, uh, we'll do that. Oh, there's an aircraft coming in already. You get to see everything with these white screens. By the way, and these are 4K screens. Yeah. So we've got all the deep. And here's that kamikaze bus again. Look at that gun. I pity the passengers on it. Do you notice something that is odd about this bus? What's that? It's on the wrong side of the road. It's driving on the right. Uh, and this is Ireland. It yeah, drives it's on, the on the left. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well. Okay, so we've got that, so now we're going to go into departures, we're going to be on 10 right. And what says the uh, departure said? That's oh, this one here, Datsun 4E. Datsun 4E, push that one. And then execute that. And go to... Uh, departures and arrivals again and now go to arrival on EGNX and we're coming in on ILS 09 actually we'll just it will be just a straight in run so execute that okay now what we'll do is we'll see how well this works so let's go to legs And now switch this to plan. Now it changes that. Now as you do the step, you'll see it change on there. So let's go ahead and do the step. 
keep going. It says showing us our route. Let's see if we've got any breaks or discontinuities. A dollop. There's crew. There's the. All right. Now go to the next one. Yeah. Go to CF09. No, no, no. Push the CF09 and then push it up to the blank. Good. Now execute that. Now we've joined everything up. See, now we've joined CF09 perfectly on that. All right. We have a, a good plan. It seems to work. So let's switch back to map and put VOR1 on there. Put, I'll put VOR1 on here. Uh, we're departing from runway 10. Is that what it's calling for right yeah, there? Zero nine seven over there? Okay, so go ahead and put 097 in there. And then put it in the heading. Okay. All right. So we've got the altitude set. All right. Everything is looking good. Our passengers, they're all on board. So we'll bring up the stairs and the door closed. And listen. That's the electric motor of the automatic stairs and they get stowed underneath the compartment underneath that hatch. Yeah. It's a really neat trick. All right, now, if you push, uh, you're going to use weather on yours, so push the weather one once, and then twice on the data. So it puts dots around there, and then, and then if you'll change your range to 20, so till that goes to 20, one more. Okay, good. Now I'm going to put terrain on mine and activate the data on mine. So this says, and turn on the TCAS. Now there's your weather. You can see what's happening with the weather right now. Yeah. And this, there's traffic right there. That's it, 2,400 feet above us. So that's what turning on the TCAS and turning on the data gives us. And that says that we've got quite some weather cells around here. Wow. All right, I'm going to switch the RTO for the auto brake. All right, I think it's, um, we need to now go into root and we'll finish the programming and go to perform initialization. So the plan fuel, 2,393 plus 2,056 comes to what? That's close to 4.5, isn't it? So the trip is going to be, the plan will be 4.5. Put that in plant fuel. Yeah. The reserves are two three nine three. So that's two point four. Two point four. Yes. The reserves. Yeah. Cost index is six. Our cruise altitude is two seven zero. Uh, the cruise wind. Yep, 103.22. Uh, transition altitude is correct, so uh, double click the zero fuel weight and it calculates everything for us. And then just push the execute, go to N1 minute. We'll take the six degrees, so slash six and put that in at the top left. See, it goes into a, a heavy... And we're not going to do any bumps or derates. We're not going to bother with noise abatement. We're just going to rattle everybody's windows. Go to takeoff. We're going to go flat to 10. 
and double tip center of gravity, that's the CG. And it calculates everything for us again. So the trim is 4.97, which we've got. Center of gravity is 23.5. Need to change this to wet. Takeoff speeds have been, been deleted, so we'll have to do this one again. So one, two, and three. Because it's wet conditions, yeah. it recalculates. So now we have a Mach of 144 in there. Okay, that's good. Now, when we depart, we're going to need to have our nose go to the left and our tail to the right. So, time to do the checklist. Uh, fuel is checked. Windows are all locked. In fact, I did wash these windows, you know, and look, it's raining on them. Seatbelt signs are all good. Uh, door lights are out. Good. MCP is programmed. Good. MCP is checked. Take off thrust bugs and uh, all done. Seating the pre-flight. We've just done that. Rudder air on trim is free and clear. Taxi takeoff briefing. We're going to go nose to the left, tail to the right, and go down there to the active runway. And anti-collision light is now going on. Now we're ready to get our taxi clearance, and then we'll get ourselves a pushback. Dublin ground, Ryanair 186 with Lima, ready to taxi by FR. Ryanair 186, taxi to and hold short of runway 10, using taxiway Alpha Tango 1, Foxtrot India, November, November, Echo, Romeo, Mike 1, Whiskey 2, Sierra, Sierra 7, contact tower on 118.6 when ready. Taxi 2 and hold short runway 10 using taxiway Alpha Tango 1 Foxtrot India November November Echo Romeo Mike 1 Whiskey 2 Sierra Sierra 7 Ryanair 186 Right we have our information so let's go to the start over here and then make it go large there you go see now you've got isn't that amazing? You can see now the taxi route that we're going to have to take. It's got all the, the points on it and everything. So we're ready now to do the push back and start. So you're set. All right. Seatbelts are fastened. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for push and start. Tail to the right. Ready for push tail right. Release brake, brake release. Parking brake. Parking brake is off. Brakes released. Dublin ground, Pacific Island. Brakes released, here we go. Ready to taxi IFR. All right, now. Let's bring in the starts. Which one we're going to start, left or right? Right. Okay. The the packs are off. The start valve has opened. You can see the engine spinning up. The N2 is spinning. When that gets to 24. Then you bring in the fuel on engine number two. And there's 21, 22, 23, 24, bring in the fuel. And now we're looking for the, oh yes, there, there's the, look at the temperature. Yeah. That temperature is good. Now we're looking for the low oil pressure light to go out. Okay. It did, good. And And let's see, okay, there's the engine start, and looking for 115 volts, we've got that, switching to engine number one, parking brake is on. Brake set. 
and this is spinning up. When that gets to 24, bring in the fuel to engine number one. There we go. All right, steering pin is disconnected. Watch for the slip release from guidance on your left. Have a good flight. Ah, oh, thank you. Those gentlemen on the ground, they're true knights, aren't they? Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, you can see the engine gas temperature and the oil pressure light has gone out, so we're getting a good hot start there. And that's coming up. There we go. And there's 115 volts. Now when this tick mark goes out here, then we've got balanced generators. So we, we need that to be balanced before we can do it in the next stage. There. Now, push both of those down. Is there? No, yeah. out of one and out of one. Oh, okay. that, that. Down, down. Now we are on the voltage running from the main engines. And so the, the next thing that we need to do is I need to turn off the turn on the packs again, turn off the APU bleed, and turn off the APU. Okay, now we've got that. Let's do the after start checklist. Generators are on check. Probe heat now goes on. Anti-ice not required, we're okay. Isolation valve good. Engine start levers idle detent. Flight deck door closed and locked. Recall is check. Uh, flight controls check. Flaps need to go to flaps. Ten. I need to make one correction there. The flaps are in transit. And good, got green light. Kamikazes, look at the kamikazes again. Um, stabilizer trim is correct. Auto brake is RTO is check. And speed brake lever down the tent. Ground equipment is clear, except for kamikazes. Right, now the tricky bit is of course is over there and the lights are good taxi lights are now on attendance we're going to go and taxi to the active runway so to get there we need to at least we need to go out we're going to go down then on that taxiway so we go out that way cross over and then go down and do that. Okay, well, so down that cross one to the way down. Then. Yeah, across that one. So you'll just follow our route all the way through there and then steer us in that direction. Okay, um, break off. And get, are you ready? Yeah. All right, again, don't make big changes. Give it a boost to get ourselves unstuck and straddle the line. So if we go across here, then we're going to need to go slightly to the left and out over there. So we're going to have to go forward. Yeah. Oh, so you're saying it's going to check. Yeah. Yeah, you can see the, the line over there. It gets really hard to see, you know, when yeah. it's raining like this. The windscreen wipers would be going like crazy at this point. Yeah, go straight across there, that's perfect, yeah. Yeah, we cross over the uh, main runway. See here we can see if anything is coming too. Now get your feet on the uh, rudder, ready for foot brake should you need it. Our speed is 8 knots, which is permissible. There's the tower for Dublin. 
Wow, it really is cycling down, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you know they call it the Emerald Isle for a reason, don't you? No. Well, if you get a lot of rain, you get a lot of green growth. Yeah. So therefore, it becomes emerald because it's raining. And go across here, and then we'll need to bend yeah. over to the left. Yeah. This one to the right, isn't it? Which one? No, it's, is it that one? Not this, but the next one, isn't it? Right yeah. Yeah. And what's that frame rate? 18, 19, not bad. 18, 19 frames per minute, a second, I should say. And then over to the right. I'll stick my hand out. Okay. Okay. Look at that. Got all wet. <laughs> And then go down to the bottom and follow the green lights. Easy peasy. So what do you think of the three screens that we've got? Yeah, it's a lot better than, than like the sort of... Than that just front... Yeah. 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 yeah well, this is the quality is better as well, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Immensely. I have two computers running this, you know. That was the flight continuity. I just wow. uh, did the your damper. Should have done it earlier, but that's okay. That's why we had the caution light on. Follow this one all the way to the bottom. In fact, there's one turning off. Let's hope he doesn't want to come and play uh, chicken with us. And there's one at the bottom, looks like getting ready for taking off. Yeah, your steering is much better. You know, when you first came here, you were steering erratically because that's normal yeah. for people but since you've been a pilot and you've uh, done this quite a bit now yeah <laughs> not, not in one of these <laughs> ah well your turn but will come it's all the same yeah. right now the crew cabin crew are giving everybody the emergency exits you know going over to here yeah. getting out there and uh, probably telling us to watch out for the pilots. <laughs> That's all right. We'll give you some bumps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, can turn all right, we'll go a little bit faster. On this taxiway, we can go up to about 24. We're 17 right now, 18. See, bottom left is your ground speed on that. You know, we may have the uh, next runway. And right, I'm tuned into the tower. There it goes, just took off. But there you can see exactly where we, we are. Pacific One, Niner 4-3, contact Dublin, departure on 1-1, Niner 45 
Picking up some spray behind us on this one. Uh, well, no one in front of us. Yeah. Well, we're coming up to the end of the uh, taxiway, yeah. so yeah, yeah, yeah. you'll need to use your toe brakes to yeah. slow us down. But both together, otherwise we'll go off it. Yeah. And make the turn when we're about 10 miles an hour or less. Okay, brake now. to break. There we go. And we'll go on up to the whole short line. See, we're category 3 aircraft, so yeah, keep going a little bit more. So. Orbit 7204 Okay. Move out into position. All lights are going on. Continuous. And starting the clock. Start your clock. And takeoff briefing is good. Engine bleeds are on. Engines continuous. All lights are on. Cabin is secure. We're good for taking off. We are clear to take off. Clear to the right. Okay. Taxi into position. Even though they've given us clearance to take off, still look. we still look absolutely, yeah. All right, everything looks good, all lined up. Down the line, center line. On the center line, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, and going to N1. We have consistent power, toga button is pushed, now you need to use your feet. That's in the right road, it's not there, we go. Yeah. Yeah. Now oh, you're doing well. Go back on the center line here. V1. Rotate. Rotate. V2. V2, pull back. Seven 
no smoking and seatbelts. Yeah. Right. Now we get to do not much between now and our descent. This is the boring bit. So this is why at this point we say in the back champagne and caviar is now being served. <laughs> so I'll see you in a little bit when we are on our final approach to land at East Midlands. See you in a bit. Well, there you are. I hope that you enjoyed a good feast back there with champagne and caviar. We have just passed over Crewe and we're now on our straight in long final coming in for East Midlands. And we are 31 minutes into our flight, so everything is working out very nicely. So sit back, enjoy, and we will land you in a moment. We will, won't we? <laughs> I hope. <laughs> okay. The lights are now on. So what gate? I can't, I can't remember now. What gate are we at? At uh, East Midlands? Nine. Gate nine. Yeah. So that's... It's right here. Oh. Uh, check the other one for the... Uh, for the park. There it is. Uh, there's there's the park. The park. But if you go to the this one, and close that out. Yeah, it is. So you can see the yeah, yeah. right there. So I don't need that chart then, I can just go through that kind of Yeah, you can. That's right. The only useful thing that that overlay is, is for a missed approach. Yeah. Yeah, you can see where the runway still is and yeah. it around it. It's up to you as to whether you use it. No, I, think, I think, like you say, you've got everything you need here, haven't you? Yeah, you do. So once we come off... Yeah, once we've landed, we, um, depending on how long it takes us to slow down, granted. Take the right turn and then we're straight up onto the apron then. Yeah, we're, and we've got traffic. Look at all the traffic. Yeah. Yeah. Three, four, and four, or something. So yeah, if we. Um, we'll okay. What's the frequency of the? It's coming with a cost of the brake. Oh, here we go. Uh, right. And Roger, Altimeter 1018. Latest, latest is what? East Midlands. 
Automatic, automatic it is. And there's the glide slope is activated, so as you can see the glide slope 
it's just opened up at the bottom. Yeah. And FF09, we've intercepted that, so now we should go straight down that glide. Well, that's for us down, we're on 40, so that's about right so far. We're probably going to be about 45 somewhere. Yeah. We'll be getting our left landing clearance in a moment. Yeah, it's flying over out of Derby now. Also, it gave us a different height to see that. 128.22. 128. Okay. It gives us a different height. Then that's an older one, yeah. Well, we have two white, two red, and we are on course to land. Ryanair 186, clear to land runway. Clear to land runway. Alright. 186. We're down the glide slope, we're on final to land. And we have two white, two red. We have, we're locked on to the glide slope. We're coming down the glide slope. And we just need a 140, don't we? We're on 178. And now I'm going to uh, lapse down. Lights are all on. We need to slow down a bit. Or yeah, we need to. One quarter. Well, as we're going to be flying down the runway. Oh, yeah. And we do what? And there's uh, Ratcliffe Tower over there. You see it on the left? Yeah, yeah. There's the power station. Still Nottingham is out there. 1,000. 1,000, check. Speed is good. Too white, too red. Got a bit of a bump in the area. We've got the crosswind. Look at that, crosswind. Eight knots. Eight knots crosswind. So we're flying at eight nine, so. 500. 500 check. I don't know whether or not we're going to have a space. 400. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty busy down there. Now you need to be in control. 300. 300 check. Approaching minimums. 200 minimums. You'll need to do the flare out to a certain extent. 50, yeah. 40, 30, it's flaring. 20, 10. Push the side button. There we go. Can you make this? Right here, Too late. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been the best one because that day the guard had to go straight down to us. Alright. Bringing up the flaps. Do you want to record speeding? Oh yeah. Okay, doing clean up. Turning on APU. There's one coming up. Um, yeah, you're 29 knots. 27, 26. Stick my hand out. Turn right here. There we go. This is whiskey. And when you get to the whole short line, stop at that point and we'll complete the cleanup. Ryanair 186, contact ground on 121.9er. Going to 121.9er. Alright, clock is off. We have 44 minutes. Turn your clock off. So our flight was 44 minutes. We did alright. And turn those off. Alright. Crew is released to go to work. 
and all right now we're ready all cleaned up yeah we're okay all right now it's out there yeah go out there so we're just going out of it and then right we've got to go past yeah. the tower yeah and then turn left so we go past this which is the uh, UPS yeah Let's see if we can. Uh, so we go down here, turn right until we get to Romeo. Yeah, and then we go left down Romeo. That's it. Okay, I'll let you take. Yeah, so we'll be there in and I'll play tourist. Here we are at East Midlands. Dark, dull day, and that's exactly what it's like outside, right where we are too. There's the UPS um, terminal for them, for the cargo, tower behind. A lot of do. Oh, great detail on this. And this is made by Gary at UK 2000. So that's the scenery for this. Gary at 2000, UK 2000 did a lovely job. And we are 22, 23 frames per second. And we need to go out over there. One, I think there are two can go there. Yeah, tango go to Romeo next one. Yeah. Yeah, take the Romeo. Yeah. Romeo, so not this one, next one. And we need to go, that's where it is, right there, left here. And is somebody already at number nine? How dare they? <laughs> and it's another Ryanair. Farewell flight and they're taking it. Oh, wait a minute. No, go straight. Yeah, yeah this is number nine. So go to the right a little bit and there then line go. up on that. Up, yeah. Oh, you know what? This is perfect. It fell into place. It did. Sure. Thomas Cook and all these Ryanairs. need to use your brake. Yeah. Got it? Yeah, that's on. All right. And brake on. And now we'll turn off the lights. APU is on. And right. And door and stairs are opening. Okay. All lights are off. Turning off the IRS, Gary off, and then we just basically go through it in reverse. Yeah, in reverse. And our passengers are running off. <laughs> you know that was a lovely landing, though. Yeah. What do you think? That was yeah, a good yeah. landing. Yeah, good. Yeah. Ended up being all right, huh? It did end up all right. Yes, indeed it did. All right. Fuel now off. And APU bleed is off. APU is off. And you turn the battery off. And shutdown is complete. <laughs> Just like that. All right. What do you think? Yeah, good flight. Good farewell flight. It was a nice short flight. Yeah. And uh, not far off what we said. We're already at 44 minutes, so three minutes off the predicted. So. Yeah, I think they said 41 minutes. Yeah. Well, we did have headwinds, you know. Yeah, so we did well, yeah. So, yeah. We were. So, I don't know, Mr. O'Leary. Mr. O'Leary, if you're listening to us, you want to hire us? <laughs> if you're hiring, we, we came in within three minutes. Three minutes. 
And we were fuel efficient too, fuel efficient. That's what we was. And here we are at East Midlands. This is made by Gary at UK 2000. That's lovely scenery. And there's the main terminal building. And that is where they'll be embarking and disembarking from. Well, a sad occasion, but uh, the last flight of Ryanair 186. But, you know, all good things have to come to an end sooner or later. This is going to go to Italy now, by the way. This is going to go to Italy. And there in a parish, there'll be a large youth group that will, will be... Uh, learning their flight skills, just like you did. What was it, four or five four, eight, years ago? Four years ago, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Still want to do airline pilot? 100%, yeah. 100%, yeah. 110 now, it's gone up 10% from today, so. <laughs> well, this cockpit is exactly the same as the ones that you'll see. Yeah. They, they may be going over to the Max version now, right. which is, um, in fact, Ryanair has ordered a lot of uh, 737 Dash Maxes. Right. So. Did not know. Yeah, but there's still a lot of the 800s about. Um, in fact, when Father Ludovic came over to uh, visit me um, a couple of months ago, uh, that was a 737 Max right. that he flew on to get here. So. He's, he's actually experienced it, and he says it was okay, so I'm okay, well, if he says it's all right, it's all right. <laughs> now, um, my flying days are now over. It's, uh, it's, it's the age for people like you. It really is. I've done a lot of flying in my time. I've flown all over the world, so I've been into posh airports, I've never actually uh, been in and out of uh, East Midlands. I, I, you know? I've not flown, but I've been on holiday from East Midlands. Have you? Yeah. Does it look like this then? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Looks like this, yeah. I'd say so. Well, we've got a perfectly dull, boring day for it. Look at the overcast and it's dark outside. But then again, it's the time of year, isn't it? Well, thank you. Thank you for coming down no, and sharing you. the flight with me. I really do appreciate it. And I wish you well. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and everyone else, thank you for flying with Ryanair 186 after all of these years. Really do appreciate it. It was wonderful to be able to have you following. And, you know, I'm going to miss you too. So my next video will be a Christmas video. So if you want to tune in for that, please do. But... For everyone else, thank you for flying. Bye, everybody.